So this is my second time homeschooling a first grader and I really have it narrowed down now and I know exactly what I want to do and exactly how I want to do it and it's simple and it's great. So stick around so I can share it with you. Welcome to Plan Prep Pray. Hey girly, my name is Wendy. I'm a homeschooling mom of four little ones. I'm currently homeschooling three out of the four this year. And I post weekly videos on all things homeschooling. I post on routines, tips, hacks, anything to help with your motherhood journey. So go ahead and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. So the first time around, I tried to do all the things and really overcomplicated the process and it was hard on him and hard on me. So this time around, we're keeping it simple and we're keeping it fun and we're keeping it light. I realized that first grade is still pretty young. It's still, um, you can have some structure, but it doesn't have to be so structured that it's not flexible. For math this year, we're going to be using Alpha Matthew C. Last year for kindergarten, we did the good and the beautiful level K math. And I loved it, but the thing about that math is, is it still has a lot of small little manipulatives. And with me having a baby and a toddler around, it just became way too cumbersome. And so with Matthew C, which I have done with my older child and it's worked amazing, it's a lot more structured and also allows for some manipulatives, but not so much that it becomes overwhelming. So we're going to try her out on alpha and see how she does. And if she does well, then we'll continue with that. If not, then we'll switch back over to the good and the beautiful. So to be announced. For language arts, we're gonna be using the good and the beautiful, and we're going to be using the level one, which includes all things, literature, grammar, punctuation, art, geography, spelling, vocabulary, and writing. So, the great thing about the good and the beautiful is not only is this curriculum available for free online, but also it is all in one. There's so many different subjects in this curriculum, so it saves you from having to look for so many different curriculums, especially for a large family. This curriculum is the best and I couldn't recommend it enough. For handwriting, we're going to be using a Farmhouse Fools course, which is pretty much just a one room schoolhouse type handwriting and it's amazing. I'm going to link down below a discount code that you can utilize to if you want to check out the code. The course is already super affordable and the discount code just helps to make it even better. Now for seat work this year, they are going to do Brain Quest, which they do every year, as well as Explode the Code. They only do one or the other per day, and it just allows for them to get some extra reinforcement in what they're learning in their language arts, as well as some extra phonics practice and anything else that they might be learning throughout their grade level, especially with the Brain Quest book, it allows for them just to get some extra practice. Now when it comes to logic, I got a lot of my ideas from JDA's video, so I'll go ahead and link the video down below so that you can check it out. For her, we're going to be using Can You Find Me, crossword puzzles, as well as Sudoku, word searches, and building thinking skills. And so she won't be utilizing all that curriculum in one day. We actually just alternate. So. Mondays is, is crossword puzzles, Tuesdays is Sudoku, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She'll also be using typing.com when it comes to her typing work. It's free and it's amazing. Now for language, she will be doing French, Rosetta Stone, which is given to us for free from our local library. Check out your local library and see if they have it for you as well. All of our children do sustained silent reading and so we pick out their books from the book list off of the good and the beautiful. It just helps me when it comes to selecting books that are not only to age level for her but are also not um, like doesn't go against our values and the things that we prioritize as a family. I also have our pre-k curriculum picks our fourth grade curriculum picks and our family subjects curriculum picks so check out the playlist 
So question of the day, do you tend to do a very structured first grade year or do you allow that to be a transition period between kindergarten and second grade? Let me know. Thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe and check out the playlist for additional curriculum picks. Bye. Okay.